Cody, are you there? Cody? Matt? serious I don't have a that's me I want that I want that on other side can you guys hear me over there good morning, good morning. Riverton, can you hear me? Riverton? Okay. Um. Can anybody hear me over in Riverton? Hello, can anybody hear me? Damn, you guys, this is some fucking hella quiet shit. Just saying. Hi, I don't have a tech. I'm in Lander. My class is operating from um, iTech 125, and I can't get any volume. I can't get a tech to appear on the screen. So I need someone over there, like Matt. Matt's in my building, usually. Right. Okay, thank you. What was that that student just said? Yeah, word. Can you guys hear me over there? <laughs> this is so frustrating. Yes. This yes. is so frustrating. I guessed. <laughs> Oh, come on. I'd help if I could, but I'm terrible with computer stuff. I need to have somebody on the other side. Hello, can anybody hear me yet? Riverton, can you hear me? Riverton, Riverton. Man, you guys are a quiet bunch. Riverton, Riverton. We can hear you. <laughs> um. Talk on it. They're leaving. So pissed. Why won't anybody? I can't hear them, see them, people are leaving. I have no tech over there. I, I, I called the, the help desk. This, they're all leaving. 
<laughs> and leave me. <laughs> and I cannot get this to. Okay, there's ITEC 125. Let me put this up. It's like a more connect ride. Because usually it'll say dialing, connecting. It's connected, I think. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, I guess it must be if it's I don't picture, know. Right? Let me see. <clears throat> Let me try it. Uh, press no, uh, for a second. Did you get somebody over there? No, yet? I can't get anybody. <laughs> called the help desk and told them what the dilemma was. And they can't hear me. I thought you were on the screen when I heard somebody has no. so I thought, maybe there's nobody in class over here. Hey Bev, this is Connie. I'm in Lander. Um Helsha is in her class. She can't see Riverton. Oh, they can't hear him. Or they she can't, can't hear me and they're leaving. They can't hear and they're leaving. She's I don't have a tech there. Yeah the students. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I see Matt. Oh, there's Matt. Matt's okay. in there now, so. But they can't hear, so. All right, thanks. Bye. Can you hear me, Matt? Can you hear me, Matt? Here. Oh, sir, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Press the button that says mic off at the top of your remote. How's that? How's that? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, your mic's on now. The mic's on now. They don't even have a picture on their screen. Oh, they just turned on the camber. What's that? A little four, three, two, one, it's counting down. Matt, can you hear me yet? There we are. Can you hear me? Technology. Is anybody there? I've never seen the little guy up in the corner. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, no. On the right hand side of the top. Oh, default call setting? Is that what you. No, the little. Tanberg. Figure on top. Hello? Oh, the person. Is that what you're talking about? The head? Yeah, the head. I would think that would mean. Picture. Hello? Can anybody hear me? No. 
Where is the pen? Where is a pen? Uh, I can go get you a pen. Is it one of those days? <laughs> um, wanna, I have a pen. Oh, I, I need a I need a race pen. Oh, you need a dry erase. Yeah, and there I'll should be some it. here. And that is a dry erase. Does I don't care. I'm dry erase. <laughs> if that one doesn't work, use a red. Yes. No, no. I don't have any idea. Matt is working on it. I'd like to know where my tech is. Oh, it's a beautiful day. I'm not going to get all upset. <laughs> it's a cold day. It's beautiful. I walked it's over. It's oh, says, did you? Mom, it's a lovely day. Breathe in. Stress out, Mom. Yeah, breathe in. No, stress I out. <laughs> I, where'd you learn that? <laughs> hey, uh, it I can, can you hear me? Yes. I could hear you the whole time. Okay, great. But I can't see a damn thing now. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that. Hang on. There we go. Okay, I can see the class. Can you hear us, Matt? Yes, we've got you loud and clear. Can you see me? Uh, I see your computer, Elsha. Oh, that's because, where's the, okay. Here you are. There we go. You see me, you see me now? Yes. And Cody is not here. Obviously. Notice I'm smiling. <laughs> see? I see. Uh-huh. <laughs> And she's happy. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm not stressed at all. It's only 15 minutes into class. No problem. I'm going to go get them donuts. <laughs> I need Valium. I'm going to go get them Valium. Okay. Okay. Good morning. I thought the first thing we'd do today... <laughs> is review the journal entries. So I am going to switch over to the computer, or you can for me, Matt, whoever wants to do this. Yeah, I'll do it for you. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. You're, yeah. a, you're a blessing. Actually, Thank you, Mickey. Actually, Helsha, I can't do it from here right now. Okay, let me do it from here. All right. There we go. Are you, you guys seeing it? Yep. Okay. Let me make this bigger. Well, I guess I can't. Um, this is posted, guys, on on your ANGEL site for NAAS 1090C. So all the journal entries are here, okay? I'm going to talk about the last few that, we've, that I've assigned. Um, okay, journal entry number six. Let me see if I can get this bigger. Okay, there we go. Uh, journal entry number three. I just lost me. Okay, this is the big one. It's one full page in your journal. It has to do with the Great Peace Policy, which is the U.S. government boarding schools and also the Dawes Act, the two prongs of that particular policy. I'm going to make this bigger. Um, Uh, you put okay. Um, so again, you can access this on your angel. Okay, so you're going to briefly discuss things, the, the different acts, and um, kind of compare them. Journal entry seven is on the Indian Reorganization Act, the IRA. 
Okay, and that was the one policy that was kind of a, a, a light in the forest, so to speak, and um, didn't turn out to be as much as they had hoped it would be. Journal entry eight is on American Indian activism. We saw the movie Incident at Oglala. That should be up on your angel also, if you haven't seen it. Um, and there's the assignment. Journal entry nine is on economic development. And again, this is on the Cabazon tribe. We saw that video uh, of their experience. Um, and we want, I want you to discuss the issues of sovereignty, economic development, and kind of identifying the negative aspects of, uh, of gaming, if there are any that you can see, because the, the video itself was very positive. And it was true, they really are doing well, but that does not uh, necessarily reveal everything. Journal entry number 10 is on American Indian Education, that's lecture 21, okay? So we saw the video, Children of a Dawn. I did a brief presentation on some statistics on some issues that are in Indian education. So there you have them up through um, current. This is up, to, up through current. So it's up on your angel, OK? Um, OK, let me go back to. I'm so dyslexic. There we go. Okay, the last two times we've been looking at issues of American Indian uh, religious freedom and spirituality. And we looked at, uh, initially, Peyote Road, and I'm so sorry for how poorly that video came across. It is now up on Angel, and one of my students here in Lander said that they watched it on Angel and it was okay. Right? Yes. So you can re-watch it again. It's a very important video. Because uh, it does talk about the constitutional rights um, of uh, members of Native American church in the sacramental use of peyote in, in, their, um, in their church. Um, so that was one prong of it. Last time we saw a, uh, we saw a video called In the Light of Reverence, which had, gave you three different scenarios that... Um, let me see if I can do this. Uh, that gives you three different scenarios. Are you here, Doc Camera? You're not seeing that, guys? It may not be turned on, Helsha. Okay, let's see. It looks like it's turned on to me. Power's on blue, auto's on green. I think it should be on there we go. Today. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So here is the assignment, and this is the last uh, paper. This is your paper, essay number three. So you're going to ask answer question number one, which is about um, the the first video, P.O.D. Road, and issues on the Constitution. Let me bring this up a little more. I handed these out. If you don't have them, I'll double check to make sure they're posted on Angel. The second question has to do with the second uh, topic, which was Indian sacred places. Okay? And we looked at the video in the light of reverence that showed three different uh, situations. One was uh, the Wintu in, in Northern California, the Hopi in, uh, in the Southwest, and the Lakota um, over here in the plains. And it talked about conflicting views of usage of land, you know, whose right is it, who, you know, how do we, how do we work this out? So I asked you please to, when you're looking at this particular uh, situation, that you, and this is important for us to practice, guys, in life, um, to practice cr being critical thinkers, okay? To try to see both sides of a situation, even though you may feel very strongly towards one particular view. You want to be able to take in and give validity to whatever is valid on the other person's end, 
okay? So I'd like you to assume that whatever one you choose, whether you choose the, the, the Devil's Tower or the Hopis or the, the Wintu, um, whichever side you tend to agree with, look at the other side and say, okay, what are their points? You know, what, what validity do they have? Do they, and they do. Everybody does. How they go about it may be wrong, but they do have validity. So I want you to look at uh, the situations, and um, I don't want you just to solve for one perspective. In other words, I don't want you just to solve for the Indians or for, you know, the miners. I want you to try to find a, 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 a collaboration, maybe even a compromise, okay? And look at what, and you can be, you can be, you can say anything you want. You can, you don't need to deal with, uh, you can kind of do in an ideal world, here is what I would do, okay? You don't have to know a lot of technical, legal things right now. Um, other than understanding the Constitution and the article in the Constitution that refers to uh, freedom of religion. And if, that, and if that applies to Native Americans who are U.S. citizens, as it does to every other U.S. citizen, then are we applying that particular part of the Constitution fairly? So this is a real, real uh, critical thinking kind of thing. Remember, it doesn't matter what your, let me go back to me if I can. I've got to find the right button. It doesn't matter what, what view you're taking. I don't care. Um, every view is valid if you can support it. So, the issue is not, okay, am I going to choose the right side that Helsha wants? No, that's not it. I want you to look at both sides of the issue as best you can, whether it's, uh, it, whether it's the peyote issue or the sacred sites issue, and think it through in your writing and come to um, perhaps a conclusion of how it is right now and then suggest a solution or possible solutions, or possible steps toward a solution. We tend to face a lot of problems in our, in our society. Every society does. <clears throat> and we talk a lot about them, but we don't work on problem solving. And this isn't to say that your solutions are going to be applied. That's not it. The point is, is that you're thinking in terms of solutions. How do we fix this? Let's not just look and go, oh, that's just a, that, that's a terrible situation and so-and-so is being unfair and they're being treated unfair. We do enough of that. <laughs> Try to find a solution. And I don't care what it is as long as it's within the realm of possibilities in an ideal world, okay? You can't say, well, I'm a fairy. I'm going to wave, wave my magic wand and make it all okay. Don't go there. <laughs> but you may talk about, well, if I were, like I had you do with the Treaty of Ruby Valley, pretend that you're a judge. You're going to decide this once and for all. What are you going to decide? What's your solution? And again, trying to be, to be sensitive to both parties. Okay? So that is your paper number three. Okay? Any questions? Any questions on the videos thus far? It, it, I, as I said, I know that uh, POD Road was uh, uh, hardly audible in the in-class presentation, but the one up on Angel now is, is, is just fine. So uh, you need to watch it again if you didn't quite get what was going on, because it is a very complex situation. The case is very complex. Yes, Susan. Um, this goes back a little ways, but I've been trying to access that 2020 video from way back. It's the one video I've missed. 
Oh. I want to be able to find that. You know why? Why? I don't know. I'll okay. check. Okay. You've looked on Angel. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'm doing something wrong. I, I, probably not. It's probably, I don't know. I'll, I'll check, though, and see okay. what, what's going on. Um, and, you know, it's uh, everything that was recorded, lectures, the videos that were with those those lectures should be there, but I'll, I'll check for you and see. Any other questions or concerns? We've only got three weeks left, two weeks actually. Remember I told you that we're going to end a week early. Um, we're not going to end on the 21st or whatever, the week of the 21st. <coughs> we're going to end on the 15th and that gives you time and it gives me time to get all the ducks in a row so I can um, get your, your grades submitted uh, before the deadline. And it gives students who are distant students the time to be able to get things back and forth to me, okay? So we only have a couple more weeks. What I want to do today, <laughs> and this is kind of fun, real, I mean, I'm kind of glad it's, it's, there's, a, there's a part of it that is, I think, quite humorous. Um, I want to watch another video on um, an issue in Native American spirituality. It's a short one. It's only 20 minutes. Um, and it brings up, and now out here, I don't know, but out here by here, I mean the Wind River Indian Reservation. I don't see this myself, but I, I only see what I see um, as being a big issue. But down home where I come from in the Southwest, <coughs> this is a huge issue. And it's an issue that some of us are going to laugh at because it is kind of funny. But there's also a seriousness to it um, that I think relates directly to how Native American traditional spiritual ways are um, are seen, how they're 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 uh, how others see them. So uh, this is it's called it's a video. Let me get it in here. It's uh, from a, a, a really good company, uh, Native Voices, who makes who has made some really good uh, videos. Let me put this in here, if I can see where it is. Let me rewind it. Hold on, I'm here. No, rewind, rewind. Okay, it is rewinding. Okay, um, this is a video, I'll put it on the, making sure it's rewinding on the overhead. Let me get the little clicker here and go to this. Okay. Uh, it's called, it's from Native Voices. Let me, let me move it out a little bit. Um, the name of this video is White Shamans and Plastic Medicine Men. And it's about the growing, uh, and it's been growing for quite a while, for quite a few decades actually, a practice of non-native people imitating native ways and making money. That's the big thing is they're making money from being these, uh, from co-opting Native American, what they know about Native American spirituality, and selling it to other white people or to other people who, who don't know any better, okay? So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, video. It'll last about 20 minutes. Um, let, me, let me make sure it's rewound here. Oh, I wish I could see down here. a little ways to go. Um, one of the people in this video, let me go back to me again. 
One of the people in this video is a good friend of mine uh, from way back. He's a comedian, and he's a native comedian. He's Oneida from the Six Nation Iroquois, and uh, his name is Charlie Hill. And I don't know if Charlie does a few things here and there still, but he doesn't do a whole lot like he used to. Um, but uh, Charlie kind of is interviewed in this, and he puts kind of a the humorous spin from in, from the Indian point of view on what these people are doing. Um, because, it, and it is humorous in some ways, but again, it's also very serious. So this is kind of an interesting experience to look at this and to kind of find out where, where am I? Where do I want to be on this? How do I, and we'll talk about it afterwards. If we talk about it afterwards for a few minutes, you won't have to do a journal entry on it. How's that? Okay? So have something to say about it um, after the, the video is done playing. Okay, I think we're ready to go. This video is only 20 minutes and it's taking forever to rewind. I'm trying to remember if it has trailers on the front of it. Okay, let's see. Um, If it does, I'll fast forward through the trailers. Please try not to shuffle papers on your end. When I went over the mountain, the creator didn't ask me if I were, was Indian. He didn't ask me if I was white. I chose my call and it answered my call. When I first heard some of the Native American teachings, I just, I remember weeping, talking about all things that being connected as I understand it, and that what you take, you must give back. There's a lot of people out there getting involved, interested in shamanism, uh, curious about shamanism. Uh, and so the idea was to provide some sort of base for the white culture. I, I can treat my product with respect. I can know who the artist is. But if someone buys it that doesn't want to use it respectfully, that's, that's not my responsibility. I'm called to do speaking engagements all over the country on this wisdom, so as, as the person becomes more popular, they can't really do what they want. This is really my love, to be here with these Native American people. And the Church of Loving Hands is a church of natural healing and medicine ways. And our primary tenant is to facilitate individual spiritual expression in all daily activities of life. You can always tell a white person when they give the Indian name. It's always these, these Hollywood type of names, you know, a Rolling Thunder or, or uh, uh, Swift Deer or... or uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can always tell that kind of stuff, and they're always English names, so to speak. Uh, I think that's ridiculous because there's no, they don't know the reason why they have names. They don't have naming ceremonies. Uh, the name come to me when I was writing something about my grandmother. And uh, I kept thinking about other names, other things. And this little boy said, nope. You are Those people, Brooke Medicine Eagle, Jim Silver Eagle, why don't they pick up a name like Bloody Gut? <laughs> Something you know, doesn't have that that ring of of uh, power and spirituality. My name is Skyhawk Oyela. My Anglo-Saxon name is Roswell. 
And I'm a Métis medicine woman of Blackfoot and Ojibwa heritage. I got my name on my vision quest, and I felt firm. This is my name. Um, I knew I heard it. It felt right. It resonated in my being. And no one can take that from me. People can mock it if they want. People can you know, do whatever they wish with it. But I feel it in my being, and, and that that describes who I am. But the Indian name comes from a very honored place and a very special, you know, like a family carrying on its tradition through its name, you know. Um, those are treated with great respect and honor. We don't just pluck names out of somewhere, you know. <laughs> Great Spirit, hear our hearts. Let our voices express our joy and our connectedness here as one people at one fire. Who? I was an Indian in the previous life. Well, you're white now. <laughs> yeah, these guys in the previous life, they always were uh, uh, kings or queens. Where I used to be uh, the Duchess of Earl when I was... A I mean, I never met a guy, you know, I worked at Standard Oil when I was in previous life. I swept up the toilet. It's always this kind of stuff. A medicine man could be viewed by his own tribe as one of the most powerful sources of inspiration, revelation, and healing. Uh, but the assumption would be if he was wearing a three-piece suit and carrying a briefcase, he probably would be dismissed uh, by the uh, outsiders. This is not the case within the tribe. Uh, within the tribe, uh, material goods often do not play a part in how we assess and treat each other and hold each other in respect. So the case of the uh, plastic shaman, if you may, uh, then is very close to the pretend Indian. Both operate off a list of symbols, and they are more concerned with the arrangement of these symbols and the display of these symbols uh, than they are with the content and the context. People keep it th thinking that what we do is, is Indian spirituality. Uh, you know, certainly the circle and the drum is a common human heritage, and yet somehow people see that as being Indian. And so I think that's, that's a lot of what we're getting from the Center for the Spirit and Chase Eaglesmith and other people that attack us who don't really know what we do. They haven't really experienced it. The heart of it is three days and nights fasting. And we do use the medicine wheel as a metaphor, but other than that, I don't... I have to tell you honestly, I don't know how Native Americans do these vision quests other than stories I've heard. I haven't experienced it. Male and female. These twin flames represent the balance that we all keep within ourselves and without. May this be brought in with us tonight. What this what this um, replication of Indians uh, ceremony uh, points out to me are two things. Number one, as a spiritual vacuum that this society that we live in, it creates people that are looking for something that's real. And uh, secondly, and sadly, sometimes they get Native Americans involved in teaching them these things. But that points out the uh, poverty and lack of opportunity on Indian land. People are so frustrated and desperate that uh, they'll do anything for money. Most of these people would read a few books and get fascinated with it and interested in it because they um, uh, had a hunger for uh, a spiritual connection to nature, which I think has been missing in, um, in the Western traditions for a long time. The idea was to give some sort of real basis, real content, 
uh, so people can, can know how to proceed. I spent years as a child going to all the different churches because I was drawn to the ritual and the ceremony. But none of them fit for me. None of them were right. The church that I loved that was in my heart from the time I came in here was the Mother Earth. This is my cathedral. This is my church. It's always been that way for me. And it will always be that way. You know, they can build a sweat house and they can go in there and learn the song. But it's fake. And if you believe in a higher power, grandfather, Tupia, whatever you want to call him, he knows that. The sweat lodge it looks traditional, and um, but what we do inside isn't exactly what, what I've seen Native Americans do inside. It has the same essence. It has a different form. Um, and that's been a lot of my councils working on developing our own form. It's real important for us for people to know that we're not white people trying to be Native American. that a lot of pan-Indian shamanism conducted by non-Indians is strictly based on visits to Indian reservations and reserves during the summertime when often powwows, which are not religious ceremonies, totally secular, commercialized, very close to the rodeo, uh, often people come and see those and they see the pageantry and they see uh, the, the genuine um, bonding amongst Indian peoples, that part is authentic and that part is real, coming together once a summer in a large encampment so you can meet people and visit old friends and relations and things like that. That is often misconstrued, I believe, to be a religious event. I don't think you have to adopt a culture to show your respect. If you're interested in culture uh, and you want to know more about it, you, know, you go to the source, go to the people, and the people will tell you as much as they're allowed to tell you. When you get to know um, the culture, then you start to respect. You understand that you're respected. <laughs> They're in areas where they don't belong because in order to be um, an Indian spiritual leader, you have to be born and raised that way. It doesn't come from a book and it doesn't come from a couple fast lessons on the weekend or whatever. And they, they can't have that. They aren't able to have that. You look in those books and those vision quests in three days and we all sit there and say, we don't do it in a year sometimes. <laughs> Um, uh, learn how to build a sweat lodge in a weekend. It took me two years, and uh, and, uh, and a lot of stumbling. We didn't offer that to the public for years, and uh, and because we knew we didn't have it down there, it wasn't it wasn't right yet. One of the things I've been told is that uh, you can have the pipe, but uh, it is not uh, empowered without the teachings. And that the teachings that uh, go with religion, tribal religions, often have this long association from, from the beginning, uh, the genesis of the tribe up until the present day. Even though a lot of the people getting involved in these ways and sometimes picking up shamanic activities may not have the shamanic background, but they may have gone through a great deal of, um, of other experiences, life experiences, that may have prepped them in a certain way. The sweat lodge I was taught and given, and I had to earn the right to, to do the sweat lodge. I had to earn the right by doing it all, learning the fire, learning the ways of the lodge. So I earned that right. 
over the years. The fact that spirituality has evolved for thousands and thousands of years here, to take it so casually and think that people can stroll in and in a matter of weeks or months or years understand something that has, that has been a burden and responsibility as well as a gift and a privilege from our elders who were given it by their ancestors, who were given this sense of understanding from their ancestors still, a month, a year, five years, what is that? Your birth date falls in the realm of you are a, a raven. Um, your spirit keeper is Mujikiwis. Mujikiwis translates in the English from Lakota is grizzly bear. So I take this general information and we do research on your birth date. And then from that information we get on your birth date, not one tribe, but a combination of lots of different beliefs and, and different tribe beliefs. And we take that information, we write a book about you. When your book is finished, I then... I think people like Lynn Andrews and Carl Castaneda and Yamaki Highwater and Swift Deer and Rolling Thunder and all these people, they've taken advantage of the ignorant public. I think some people generally want to know things. They really do, but these other people, they have the white power and privilege to do these things, so they'll go around and do that. They always seem to make a lot of money behind all this. Large. Their fees, um, the fees cover our cost. We don't make anything. Um, we don't have our nonprofit from the government yet, but everything here at Earthwalkers is nonprofit. Um, it works. I think that's the, the big thing we want to share is this way works. There's a, a way to do it in honor, reverence, and respect. Once again, it's taking what's sacred and making it profane. It reminds me of how I would respond if someone asked me what, what price I would set on my grandmother or grandfather. How can you sell something? that has to do with your, your very survival. Um, I have a problem in the fact that we're using buying and selling in somewhat of a derogatory way, when in fact buying and selling is a reciprocal aspect that happened hundreds of years ago, but it might have happened with sell. Money is an exchange form. It always has been. We're trading. There, it, it isn't necessarily bad just because you sell something. They have only seen the profit side. How should people, where they charge uh, anywhere from 50 to $100, to take you into a sweat box, which to me is is very hurtful to, to, the, to the ancestors who looked at the, the sweat box as a place of sacredness. You know, when somebody is, is trying to teach you something, and if the message is real, it shouldn't cost you anything. But that learning is free. That sharing is free. And if there's somebody that's going to sell you a sweat lodge or sell you a ceremony, well, that simply uh, violates the spirit of that very uh, act. It's like somebody trying to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. It can't be done. And it's the same with uh, Indian ceremonies. It just, it just simply uh, can't be done. The elders are very private about our religion and our, our spirituality. And it's my sense that those that know don't say and those that say don't know. Some of the New Age people that come in and have appropriated tribal spirituality have no clue. They're clueless about what this means to, tri to tribal elders. It's not something that you, you boast about. It's not something that you go out and put a show on so that you can impress those other people that don't understand. That does not give you strength, it takes strength from you. And we really feel
feel the importance of sharing those sacred things. It's what our world needs. It's what our culture needs to bring healing. Um, if our culture stays, that Western culture stays the way it is, and with people thinking the way they do, then we're heading, you know, just straight for disaster. Um, and we're all going to die in that. Yeah, we really feel how much it's healed us and how much it helps us to heal with our world. Um, we really feel called to share that with anyone who will hear it and, and feel it in their heart. proselytizing religion that seeks its survival via membership by bringing in people no, that never had any connection to that religion, in order for that religion to survive, it must proselytize and it must attract members to it. Uh, one of the ways of attracting a membership is to, with a great deal of pageantry, a great deal of extended symbol, a great deal of promise that symbols will reveal uh, inner truth. This does not happen in tribal religion. And part of using it means giving it away to, uh, to you know, your world. And that's been part of our growth here at Earthwalkers, is figuring out what our part in the world is. And that has brought us out into a larger community than just our own small circle. And our dream, our vision is that this is eventually going to encompass the globe and include all people. We want to educate people about Native American history. We want to educate the American public or the United States citizens about their complicity and uh, what has happened and what is continuing to happen to Native American communities in the name of their government. And um, the message that we uh, share with uh, the public is a message that is a spiritual message. That in fact, we all have a responsibility to the earth. That we all have a responsibility to our children and grandchildren and future generations, no matter what race or culture or ethnicity or where we're coming from. But we're absolutely not trying to uh, proselytize. We're not trying to uh, get people to be practitioners of Native American uh, religion. We're not, uh, we're not trying to uh, 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 get them to uh, adopt our ways. I've spent all my life being uh, a bridge maker. My weapon is education and communication so people will have understanding. Once people have understanding, then they can act in a good way. They can act with balance in their lives. My path on the Mother Earth is a bringer of light, a light bearer, that's it. How, how godly of someone to know what it is that's, that's right spiritually for other people. That's that whole missionary proselytizing ethic. Come to me, I have what you need, and, and bring me your money. That's the antithesis of tribal spirituality. I think the best thing to do is get a bunch of Indian folks doing their thing. And just everybody start laughing at everything they say and do. That'll, you know, when you really kill the enemy, he's totally powerless. You know, when you go for this new age stuff, it's like uh, uh, you're trying to make the wound seem like it's okay on top, when in fact the wound needs to be lent down to the quick, down to the living skin, down to where it hurts, at a place where healing can start to take place. But in order to remove that cancer, we have to establish relationships with each other that are built upon respect for these ancient cultures. We laugh at you. 
we, we, we tolerate you and we laugh at you. I guess we're too polite to say get out of our face. Each one of them should be exploring their background, you know, before their, their ancestors came from across the ocean. They should go over there and learn their own ways and practice them, you know. In my culture, it's always been taught to me that you don't respect, you don't show respect, you don't treat things properly. In the end, it comes back on you. In the end, it will hurt and destroy you and kill you. And I believe that the punishment, whether it be today, tomorrow, or sometime down the line, will come back on you. We're not trying to, to be Indians. Right. What are they trying to be? I, I, I don't know. I don't think they, they really know. I mean, when... Are they just trying to exploit the Indian? Well, culture? there's a lot of exploitation. That's part of it. You know, you saw the advertisements in the newspapers. Uh, the well, $125 to step yeah. into a sweat lodge. And the other thing is, the same, same circle, the guy says, oh, we give these teachings away. No, they don't. No, they, they don't give them away. The woman said that there's fees to be charged. Right, right. And then the other guy contradicts what she said, says these teachings are free. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, it's, it's, it, well, it's free because they say that all they do is charge to cover their costs. Well. Which, um. I believe that the Indian culture should be taught by the Indians. Should be taught by Indian people. Yes. And 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 I think that that uh, that's valid because yeah. it's not yeah. like they said something you learn from a book or mm -hmm. something you can go yes. to a conference for a weekend and come back as a, a shaman or a medicine person. Well, you know, you can't do that. That's that's not. That is, in a way, it's very blasphemous right. uh, to to Indian spirituality, when when these people think that. I think a lot of them believe the people who participate in this stuff, who buy into it, are sincere. The people who are selling it, that's another question. Right, and that's just like I. I uh, was invited to attend a funeral. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize an Indian funeral took three days. Mm. And it's like, wow. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I was unaware of the culture. Yeah. And it was like, wow. Not but really. It depends upon the culture. Right. Some of them take that long, some of them are. Right. Yeah, it just depends. Yeah. But yeah, everything's different. What about Riverton? What do you think? You there? Yes, they're here. Are you there, Riverton? I turned here. 
I'll show we're here. What's wrong with this? Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear us? Oh, there we go. So comments from Riverton. Nobody's saying a word. Why is that? agree with the, the one woman who spoke and said that it's not something you can learn over your years. Right. Inherited. You're born. Right. With it and it's passed down for so many. And and, and part of that um, I, I think is, is uh, understandable in the PowerPoint presentation that I did on what Indian spirituality is not and what it is. It is not a, a, you know, for one thing, it's, it, you can't read a book like the Bible and get the understanding. You don't, it's not set up that way. It's something that is set up to be learned as part of a culture. When we first talked about the American Indian paradigm of, of all things being related, the, the, the spiritual is not set aside from secular from the everyday life. In other words, you can't define this is this is this is religious and this is not and this is religious. <coughs> there are ceremonies that do tend to stand out that people look and go, oh, that's their religion. But they don't understand that that's just one expression of it. It's not it's not it itself. It's in everyday life. It's something that you are raised with and you grow with. You can't just read it in a book. I understand that with some religions you can. If you read the Bible and you go to the church that you choose, you can learn about that, uh, that way of, 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 of spirituality. Indian religion isn't that way. It's not that way. And it can't be learned. And the big issue is that people are making money. The one of the other unfortunate aspects of it is, is that even some Indian people are making money by exploiting your Indian and making money off of uh, people who are seeking for some sort of, of meaning in life. You know, these people are truly seeking things out, um, but they're being exploited. By, by these other people who are selling them something that they don't even really understand. So it's a, it's a really, I don't know if it's a big problem right here. I haven't seen it myself too much, but back home it's real bad. Um, it, you know, you can open up any newspaper, um, say in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and you'll see advertisements, you know, where you could go and buy your way into a sweat lodge or buy your way into a vision quest. Um, and that is, uh, those people are, are either not understanding what it is, or they do understand it, and they just don't care, and they're going to exploit it one way or the other. It would be like, uh, you know, charging money to go into a church. You know, you can donate in a church, you can put some money in the plate, just as you can donate to an elder for, for coming and doing a blessing or doing, doing something that is uh, important like that. But you don't have to pay at the door. And these people are having to pay at the door. And then they're walking away thinking, oh, okay, now I know the path. Right. I and, think a lot of people are just um, dying for relief. They're no, needy. They're, they're, they're needy for a, a direction. And the world is nowadays. And Native Americans have been, in, 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 some, in, in some circles, Native Americans have been romanticized 
to this point of, you know, like if you, in California, every, practically, I shouldn't, I'm stereotyping in, in a way, but you will find many people who find out if you're native, they think that somehow you're some sort of a shaman, you have some sort of spiritual, magical power, because you're Indian. And then you come out here, and the perception is that of, oh, it's another drunken Indian. You know, it's a very different stereotype. And you find these different stereotypes throughout the country, uh, depending upon what the situation is in a particular region and what the history is. Well, like one woman said, um, we need so that our world doesn't come crashing down, basically. Yeah. Um, in my aspect, I think that there's there needs to be all walks of life, and you don't expect it to yeah. infringe on your right. Yeah. So why infringe on theirs? Yes. You know, um, I don't believe that we need to know everything about the Indian culture. Right. It's nice to learn, but they don't know everything, everything right. about our culture. Right. And um, that diversity has value. Right. It has a meaning. It fits into the whole picture. Right. The diversity of spiritualities and religions and ways of, 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 of viewing the world and the universe. Um, it, it's very, very necessary that, that, you know, the Creator has given us different ways of, of relating to Him. And that they're, they're fine. You don't need to be an Indian to do it right. You don't need right. to pretend you're an Indian or you don't need to pretend you're a Catholic or a Mormon. You know, if you want to be that and that's where you are, great, go for it. You know, that's that's going to give you the strength, that, that spiritual center that Orrin Lyons talked about in his video. You know, that everything needs a spiritual center in order to survive and uh, in order to proceed into the next generation in, in, in a, you know, um, in a healthy way. So, and you know, you could say, well, some of those people, for example, the Celtic people in Ireland, and I'm just using them as one example of many, they have uh, what they call borns, they're drums, they're hand drums that look a lot like Native American hand drums. Now out here in, the, in this area, mostly what you see is the big drum and you see a number of people singing and, um, uh, you know, utilizing that drum for, for songs. And in some parts of the world where I'm from, people are very much into individual hand drumming and singing songs. They own those songs. Those songs are, are part of their family, so to speak. Um, but what I see is not drums that reflect the Celtic uh, heritage. They're trying to imitate Indian. It's like the gal with the Indian beaded earrings. Don't tell me you're not trying to be Indian. Why do you have those earrings on? Why do you why do you have the trappings that is a stereotype of what an Indian person is? And so it's 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 a it's and it's unfortunately it's big business. It really is. Well, guys, thank you for uh, the 15 minutes of chaos putting up with it anyway. Next week, what we're going to start looking at is health and healing. We're going to look at some of the health issues in, in Native American, uh, uh, in Indian country, in Native American communities, and look at some of the healing ways um, that people are becoming healthier and adapting uh, a healthier lifestyle. And that's a really big issue in today's world. So we'll be looking at that uh, at least next week, okay? Thank you very much. Young Tuesday. Thank you, Matt.
sitting with on the floor.